Um, we, we have been talking about the last two weeks, this week and last week, about some really heavy stuff. Uh, when we talk about heavy stuff, we love to come in and, and have as good of a time as we possibly can because Christianity is not just about heavy stuff all the time. It's about hope and not just heaviness. And so through the heaviness, Jesus is offering us hope because he's cool like that. So we know that, man, there's, there's a lot of just, just junk and crap happening in the lives of teenagers, in many of your lives, in many of the friends' lives that you have, the friends that are around you, tonight we're specifically going to talk about cutting, we're specifically going to talk about self-injury and self-abuse and different things like that, Um, because here's the deal. We are on a, on a pretty strict schedule as, as what we're seeking to accomplish is to move you through the entire Bible in six years from Genesis to Revelation and show you how God throughout the entire scriptures is pointing us to Jesus, who he is and what he's done and how he's coming back and what he's going to do and how awesome that is. And I believe that's the most important thing to do as a student ministry because then we make sure that God is the one that speaks to the issues. Because ultimately it's not about the issues, ultimately it's about a heart that is trained, that is moved, that is encouraged towards Jesus Christ. But also there are times when things happen that are huge, that are hurtful, tragedies, um, just heavy stuff that happens that I believe that we as a student ministry needs to respond to. So we believe the Bible. We know that we are working through all the scripture, but at the same time, I don't want us to be a student ministry that just says, man, we're doing our own thing, we're on our own schedule, and, and no one can tell us, no one can change us, no one can do anything about it. We need to be a student ministry in our community that has an ear open in listening to hurting people. And I think the more that God lays it on my heart to switch and to change gears at time to say, man, we we really need to focus on this, I think the Spirit of God will do the same thing in you. And the Spirit of God will do the same thing in you saying, "I, I know I'm on a trajectory of living my own life my own way, but I need to stop. I need to hear people out. I need to listen to them. I know they're hurting. I know they're damaged. I know that they've gone through some really terrible trials and tough times. I need to listen, and I need to be humble, and I need to be someone who helps. So that's why that we've been changing gears over the last couple weeks. We need to be a student ministry that responds. So tonight as we're talking about cutting and self-injury and self-abuse, go go ahead and put up this first slide here, Taylor. Uh, I want you to know that, and and by the way, go ahead and grab your NAPMA. Someone run me up real quick uh, uh, an extra NAPMA. Josh, is that an extra one right there on that chair? Or David, thank you. All right, thank you. Jason Cunningham, wannabe. Okay, so um, I'm playing, I'm playing. Um, If you see here on your NAPMA, the the CBSM on cutting, the the backside when pain feels good, um, here's the deal. Some of you have thought through this, Uh, The issue of cutting and and self-abuse and self-injury, some of you are tempted to do it. You have been tempted to do it, as you can see on the screen. Some of you before have gone through it. You've experienced it. You've done it. Some of you have stopped and you're recovering. And man, you're just hoping that it never comes back up in your life again because of what it led you to and the type of person you were. and, And it did not make things better. It made everything worse. And But some of you may be thinking... This has nothing to do with me. This has nothing to do with me. I've never been tempted with this. I've never gone through this. I've never experienced this. I don't have friends that have. Here's the deal. Don't have your focus so inwardly on yourself that you don't know what's going on in this world because if you are called to the gospel to follow Jesus Christ, then our lives are not about ourselves. Our lives are first about Jesus, secondly about others, and lastly about us. And so we take this, we take notes, we know that we don't do this just to receive, but we take notes to give it to somebody else because people are going to come to you and we don't need to be seen as self-righteous Christians who are unconcerned about people who are hurting and things going on in the world. 
We need to be Christians who care. We need to be Christians who help. We need to be Christians who rise up and say, we're not any better. We don't come up with the answers. We've just been forgiven, and we just happen to serve the God that has given us the answers. So we want to help. So make sure that you take good notes tonight. If you need a pen, this is a good time right now to raise your hand. And we have some leaders in the back that will come around and give you some pens and things like that. If you need to take notes, go ahead and raise your hand right now if you need a pen. Real quick, I should have done this earlier, but I did not. We're not going to point you out and embarrass you at all, but we have two brand new guests tonight. Would you give a hand for, there's a Jason Joffreon. I have no clue. That's the coolest name ever. Can't even say it. It's so awesome. And a Natalia Ponder tonight. Pondar. Give them a big hand for being here. Jason and Natalia. We are super excited. If, if you are here for your very first time and you have not filled out one of our CBSM hello cards, we definitely want you to fill one of these out before you leave. We have a free gift for you that we want to send you in the mail, in the mail. All right, so that was reasons to know about it. Let's talk about real quick different ways that people hurt themselves, different ways that people hurt themselves. Make sure and write these down, just, just so we are totally aware. And by the way, this, this is not an exhaustive list. People are creative and they come up with new ways to hurt themselves all the time, all the time. So, so just so we understand, write these down just so we know what's going on. Some people are scratchers, which means they take their fingernails and they scratch their skin over and over and over again, um, that, that, that they feel that feeling over and over again until they begin bleeding. Other people are biters. Uh, they might bite their fingernails. They might bite their fingers. They might bite their skin um, to try to either relieve pain or bring more pain for different reasons we'll get into. Some people are pickers. Um, pretty sure that's not the nose, but it is. Uh, that, that's just a whole, that's, never mind. That's, that's just a, a guy thing to do, I guess. But um, some people are pickers, and what they do is they pick at scabs, they pick at uh, skin, they pick at, you know, different things like that and try to, try to make themselves bleed in different ways. Some people are punchers. Uh, punchers are people that literally um, beat themselves um, until they get black and blue or bruised or different things like that. They just, they punch themselves as hard as they can repeatedly. Some people are burners. They would take a cigarette or they would take um, um, a cigarette lighter or just a lighter itself or whatever it might be, um, and they would burn themselves in some way. And some people are breakers. Uh, I've read about people that either hit their head against the wall or they repeatedly run into a wall, and their goal is that, um, that they would break a bone, that they would break a bone. Um, in all honesty, in all honesty, there's, there's, there's nothing funny about this whatsoever. Nothing funny about this whatsoever. This, these are people who are truly hurting that are going through some really traumatic times in their life, and they're looking for answers, and they're not sure how to cope. They're not sure how to deal. Um, for us to say, for us to ask the question, why would anyone ever do that, that's crazy. Let me just help you to understand something. That question has never helped anyone. That question has never helped anyone. Why would someone ever do that? That is a very self-righteous, very prideful question to ask. Because here's the deal. We all struggle with our own sin. We all have sin in our lives in some way, and our sin works itself out in other ways. Some people are experiencing sin in other extreme ways, like we're going to talk about tonight, because they are going through extreme hurt, because they are going through extreme pain, extreme emotional trauma, and because it's so damaging, because it's so deep, because it is so unbelievably unbearable they're, they have not been taught how to handle it. Let, let me read you. Go, go on over to the next slide if you don't mind. Um, these are reasons why people hurt themselves. You can write some of these down. I'm going to read them off. You can read them on the screen. Some people do it as a cry for help or to get attention or just to be heard because they think or they feel no one's listening. They, some people that hurt themselves, they do it when they think they deserve it when they deserve to be hurt or to be punished. They do it when they are seeking an escape from reality. Some people might do it as seeking to escape from reality, meaning um, real life hurts so bad that they feel like if they can hurt themselves enough, 
that they can go through this, this like drug, almost like a drug-induced state to where it literally says that they're feeling like they're hovering over their own body, like they're not even living real life. Some just want to feel pain, physical pain, because their emotional hurt has made them feel numb. Their lives are out of control, and inflicting pain on themselves is the only way to control something. They are bursting out in anger against themselves. Pain is an expression for them when they have no words to communicate how much they hurt. Their physical pain is a release and a relief from their emotional pain. They are checking for blood to come out of them because sometimes they just want to make sure that they really are alive and not living some dream. It is like a drug high for them as their body releases endorphins with every cut. And every cut must be deeper to continue to feel the same release. They are punishing some are punishing themselves as they feel like everything is their fault or for maybe deep, unmentionable, private sins that they've committed against themselves, themselves or someone else. Those are reasons why people hurt themselves. Let's talk about how many people hurt themselves. Go ahead and place these stats on the screen for me. You can write some of these down. You can listen to me as I read them. I'm going to go through some different ones as well. 20% of teenagers today say that they have purposely, purposely injured themselves before. One-fifth of all teenagers. And here tonight, we probably have somewhere around 150, 175 teenagers. Um, that would mean probably, probably about 30 to 40, sometimes even up to 50 people in here have, have dealt with this before even more that you know that you have friends who are going through it. I read a stat that said one out of every 200 teenage girls cut themselves regularly. That's the one stat that I could find on the internet. A couple other people told me this stat as well. To be very honest with you, I don't believe it. I think it's way higher than that. I think it's way higher than that. Um, I, know, I know of several, several, even in this group, that have at least struggled with it in the past. They are usually these type teenagers that self-harm or self-injure themselves are from upper to middle class backgrounds. 90% of those who self-injure began in their teen years or younger. Of all people who commit self-injury, 40% are male, 60% are female. Almost 50% of cutters have reported that, that they have been sexually abused in some way. Almost 50% of self-abusers began at the age of 14, and they continue it on into their 20s. Many cutters admit that they have learned how to do it, and why to do it, and when to do it, and where to do it, from their very own so-called friends. Serious issue. Some of you know how, more, how much more serious it is than even I do. If you've experienced, if you've had friends that have experienced, you've seen the de despair, you've seen the depression, you've seen the emptiness, you've seen the addiction, you've seen when they are just trying to understand, just get control of something, but yet there is this void in their life and things are not getting better like they thought would get better. Things are actually getting worse and more out of control, more emotional pain, more physical pain, more depression, far worse. We're going to get to it, but I just want you to know right here, right now.